Okay. So hopefully today you can hear me. Uh, the last video I did, which is obviously the first one. I didn't do it. Uh, I just did it um, uh, with video only. Um, so today I'm going to try it with the audio. See how that works out. And uh, hopefully it'll come clear uh, in the... Uh, through the iPhone, which is what I'm using to shoot with. So today, uh, for our second second video, I'm going to tie a pattern that uh, that I first came up with many, many years ago, uh, 10, 12 years ago, as a variation of a muddler. And, and it proved to be very effective for a number of different species, namely brook trout and Labrador at the time. But since that time, I've many people use it uh, for various species all over all over Canada and US actually and um, had the pleasure of um, receiving some of their pictures for a number of different uh, species that was got on the same pattern so it's pretty effective I think that comes in a bunch of colors so today um, I'm gonna stick with the olive uh, which is probably one of the more popular ones um, so let's get started so the hook I'll be using is a TMC 300, which is a relatively long shank, heavy wire hook. If anybody is familiar with the TMC. So this is the uh, hook. It's uh, I believe it's a 6X. And I use a corresponding cone. This particular one that I'm using today is a, is a number four, which is um, relatively big. I tie them up to a number two, but... Uh, traditionally, it's uh, a four, four and six mainly. And for the number four, I use a uh, quarter inch brass cone. Uh, of course, you could also use a tungsten cone if you wish to get it uh, a little bit extra weight. Okay, so first thing, we're going to secure this cone. I do it probably a little bit differently than some. You could secure it by lead if you want, if you want extra weight. Wrap lead, wrap your thread around the lead, push the lead up against the cone. You'll see that in a number of different videos that people, uh, other tires have, um, have done for various cone heads. But uh, what I do is uh, slightly different. I'm not sure where I first seen it. So what I use is a uh, very simple, I just use a dubbing ball, basically. Wrap the dubbing ball. Tie off. And, okay. and what I do then is I push the dubbing ball right up inside the cone. So the reason, the purpose behind that is the dubbing ball, when I drop a bit of Zappa Gap or Z, Z, Z Mint, is what I use in here, then the dubbing ball will soak up the, the glue and not allow it to uh, bleed down through the cone and into the eye, but at the same time then it will secure the cone in place. So you don't need very much, just let it drop. Let it dry. I got some already done up, so I'm not going to wait for that to dry. Again, like I said, you just kind of adjust the cone so it's in the right position, put that aside, and uh, it doesn't take long to dry. So I have one here that's already done. Okay. So the tail on this fly is a uh, is marabou. I'll lay down a thread base. Roughly up to the cap. And for a size four, I use, I use two plumes, two marabou plumes. This is just strong marabou, natural. Uh, just regular strong marabou, nothing fancy. It's not uh, bully bugger marabou or anything like that. It's just uh, regular blood plumes. It's 
So you can tie these in one at a time if you want, or you can do them in together, uh, which is normally the way I do it. So I'll lay two of them side by side. A little bit wetting. And just kind of just roll them in your fingers, line them up. And the tail's usually around the length of the body, so basic from the hook eye to 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 the end of the thread really is normally the way I do it. So I, I'm using a a UTC 70 here and I'll I'll tell you why in a minute. It's not an overly strong thread, but um, you can use all other alternatives if you want. Uh, the idea is is to use a thread strong enough but not to uh, build up bulk. And I'll show you why in a minute. So we just wrap this one in. Nothing too fancy. Leave yourself lots of room here uh, behind the comb. And again, the reason for that, it'll become apparent as we get um, closer to the um, tying some of these materials off. You'll get the idea here because that's about the only thing in this pattern that you could run into trouble with is if you don't, uh, if you judge materials incorrectly, I guess is a better way of putting it. Um, and you lay on too many and it bends up too much, too much in behind a cone and then you can't, uh, can't spin your, can't spin your head. But uh, I'll show you that in a minute. So and that's the body, or the tail, sorry. So for the um, uh, in the tail, I also add a little bit of flash if I can find it here. And uh, I use a little bit of um, um, flashaboo. And if um, as you watch more of these videos, you're going to get a you're going to see that I use this holographic flash boot quite often. Um, it, it was sort of suggested to me by um, someone many years ago who swore by it for many of his streamers and I found it to be very effective and ever since then I've been using it as well. So anyway, I tie a few strands on either side. There's a few ways you can do this. Uh, this is probably the easiest way, just one on one side and then the other clump on the other side. And that's it. Trim these off just slightly past the tail. And that's it. And what I do there now is I tie off the UTC 70. TC 140 in red, fluorescent red. And I'll show you that in another second. So and that's more of a hot spot, I guess. Than anything else? It'll secure the um, the rabbit strip, which is your next materials. Just a regular zonker strip, one eighth, roughly. And I normally taper the uh, tapered skin end on the on the tail piece. And the strip is normally the length of the tail to just behind the cone, so I'll leave myself a little bit of room there. Split the zonker strip, expose a bit of the skin. There you go. And we wrap it in with red. And 
gonna try to cover up the previous wraps, of course. Secure it good. You can glue this afterwards if you want, or once you whip finish it, I don't think it's gonna come apart, come apart on you. Only thing here, you, you, you're gonna have to hand whip finish because you won't get a whip finisher in there. So hand whip finish. Okay, so that's that part. Just pull that back out of the way for a second. Okay. Now you can go back to your UTC-70 if you want. What I'm using here is a Vivas uh, ADOT, I believe. Again, um, doesn't build bulk um, strong. And again, it's in white. Tell your Vivas ADOT in. The body is a crystal sheeting eel. Um, this happens to be medium or medium large, doesn't really make that much difference. So, your body is wrapped in. Tie your crystal chenille. And again, leave yourself, you know, lots of room up here. Although on this size of hook, with this comb being as large as it is, uh, you really run into challenges on the smaller hooks rather than on the larger ones. You have a lot more distinctively, you know, you have a lot more room on these than you would on, say, on a size 8 or 10. It gets to be a bit of a, a challenge. And you wrap your chenille in. I usually do about three, four wraps, and then I kind of test it, give it a little, like a little bit of a secure wrap, and I wrap them close together so I don't have any gaps in between. Okay, it's a little bit of a bump there, you'll notice, right? So I'm just trying to taper this out a little bit before I wrap the uh, rabbit strip over. Okay, that's good. So the rabbit strip comes over the top. And you kind of just preen that out a bit and then roughly where it's where it's going to fall, you can tear off the uh, fur if you want, or you can just wrap it in on the bare strip. And this is where, like I said, it, it's good to have a little bit of a stronger thread here because you, you want to be able to pull fairly hard here on this in order to make sure it's secured. And that should do it. All right. I trim off most of the rabbit because, like I said, all it's going to do is going to build up bulk right behind the comb. Okay, smash all this down. Should do it. That's looking alright, I think. Okay, for the throat, um, you can use a number of different things. Um, I, I use red. Um, I can find it here now. Uh, you can use red ice wing if you want, or um, or red um, laser dub, which is what I'm looking for here. There we go. So that's the red laser dub. I use this in a lot of uh, a lot of my throats. Uh, just gotta kind of got a habit of using it. So on a size four. Uh, it's a fairly pronounced throat. I want the red to show through. And that's when the fly is finished. And what I do is I pull these fibers apart just to kind of line them all up and get any of the things that happen to be knotted. 
So I got a, I don't know, a couple of inch length here. And I tie this in underneath. Long loose wrap. And I wrap over the top of it. Wrap up over the wing or over the rabbit strip a little bit. These here, you can kind of just pull these off with your fingers. And that's about it for throat. Very simple. You can tell the strip, even now you can tell how that strip is building bulk, right? So, um, the thing about this fly is, you know, is, is uh, the key to this fly is movement. And, um, and nothing uh, creates better movement than marabou, or um, marabou and uh, and slapping and not slapping. What I do here is, although I, I use this upper end here on many of the smaller flies and the larger flies, um, when I can, you know, get slapping that has it, that has a good quantity of it, I use a fuzz on the bottom. So I tie these in to utilize uh, this material on the bottom, which is, gives it a lot of movement. I don't need a lot of wraps here. Oops. So kind of just preen it back a little bit as you're going. You probably only need two wraps. So, might look ugly, but it gives the movement that you're looking for. So as you can realize by now, on the smaller flies, with smaller cones, you gotta you gotta back off on a lot of your materials here because if not, you'll just build up such a large quantity of material behind the cone. You'll never get uh, you'll never get a spun hit on there. Right? So the last bit of material before the before the deer head is I use um, uh, legs, and what I've been using is these. Silly legs from Wopsy. I use two. You can tie these underneath if you want, although some patterns they tie them underneath. This particular one, I try to put them up more on top of the fly. It's just the way I build it. And again, these can build bulk too, so. so one, just kind of keep things minimum if you can. Wrap the other two on the other side. Just like that. All right. It's not too bad. Now you want to keep these out of the way. A nice little trick that I use quite a lot is these hair clips. Um, that's a fairly big one here. Small one will probably do the trick. And uh, they do come in handy, especially on this pattern here. So it keeps everything out of the way. Okay, so everything is tied down. So you tie off your uh, beavis. And what I tie in then is. Uh, you can use a number of different things. I happen to use a, a GSP thread by Beavis again. GSP 100, I believe this one is. I find the 50s maybe a little bit too slight. And the 150s is, is too too much. Builds too much bulk. Um, it's not really necessary, I find. The 100 seems to be about right. So what we, there's not a lot of space here, um, but what we want to 
do here is we want to create a yeah this will work create a collar and then a small head so I'm using um, a deer strip and sculpt an olive um, just uh, you can use well this happens to be one of the Wapsi uh, Primo strips you, the only thing is you you want good hair um, if you don't you're gonna have trouble getting this head right this one's mostly used here now, but uh, I can manage that quick. So what I do is I normally take the collar, not like a typical muddler where you're doing it all in one one step. I don't have my comb here. I guess I do. And my mega stacker here. slight um, also don't put a lot on the bottom usually I allow the red to, throw, to show through okay so I tie it in two pieces first one roughly to the tip of the uh, to the hook point first one comes in on the side I give this a spin here so I'm not laying it flat. One. I kind of just roll it with my finger a little bit just to kind of get it on the side. Leave that in place. Get myself another clump. Again, not a very big clump because, uh, as you can imagine, I'm doing it on both sides here so. If I tried to do this um, in one spin, I think it, you know, I've tried it before and it can be difficult to get um, any kind of consistent uh, coverage, particularly this much buildup on the head and then you're spinning around that much thread. I find this is a much easier way of doing it. Again, line my line my collar up. You want to go into the roughly the same spot you tied in the last one. One, two. And you can pull pretty hard on this GSP. You won't have any trouble. You won't break it. Take one, maybe two turns in front just to lock it in. All right, you'll see here is a small gap between the cone and the collar. And what you're looking for is to spin one clump in in between there to create the rest of the head. This can become a bit of a challenge too at times. Um, if you try to spin too much in there, um, you'll have difficulty getting it to rotate around. And then too little then and the uh, You'll have gaps in it, right? So that's about, I think that's about right. Now, the trick is to try to give yourself a little bit of room here. So I pull this back, hold it back, give the thread a spin again. And again, this is where the GSP comes in handy because many times if you use other types of thread, you try to spin it against the cone, the thread will hook the cone, and you could possibly break your thread. So it's one loose, two. Now, as you as you pull towards you, as you spin, you let go and kind of just let this thing rotate in in between. Now that wasn't great. More of it ended up on the other side, but you can kind of you can kind of preen it a little bit with your fingers sometimes, and you'll get this thing to rotate. It's not too bad. So again, wrap right behind the cone. Two, three. And whip finish. Pull back and then whip finish right in behind the cone. You don't need to get any glue or anything in here. This is fine. 
and then razor blade. Is that handy? Okay, so what you want to do is want to trim this back. First, you can, you can let this go again. Um, your your legs or, or whatever you want to call them, they're usually around half, just around half the length of the tail. Typically, is the way I keep them. So I got two there, and then there's another couple here, like that. So they kind of fall out over the back here more than anything. And in the water to give you that little bit of extra movement. But you'll see that in a second when I get, when I get it trimmed. Okay, so the last thing left there now is the uh, is to trim the deer. Bit of a mess. Uh, so you follow basically the profile of the comb. And you try to trim back enough so you don't trim off your collar. So you, this is not a new, new razor blade, but uh, I think this will be fine. A new one would be better. And a rotary vise comes in handy because you can just... Uh, can rotate around rather than doing this in your hand which of course works fine as well Actually, it didn't turn out too bad. Um, what you can do here on the bottom, you'll see the red, see the red throat here. And you, you can notice here, it's not a whole lot of hair down underneath, and that's by design. I try not to spin too much down at the bottom, and if there's any comes down or you want to get them at it, or just, just use your uh, scissors. Scissors probably be better your blade you could end up trimming your throat off and you could kind of come in here and you see any any butt ends basically that's that's out of whack you can go in with your scissors and cut them off uh, but this no it, it turned out okay so this one's not too bad and that's about oh let's drag over here get that guy excuse me get that guy out of there and that's it. Now, like I say, this is a fairly big, big guy. Um, show you a number. That would be a number six in the same, same thing. And you can also tie these with, um, with, um, with a dubbing brush. Um, uh, in uh, recent years, that's what I've been doing, and I've. I've had good success with them and have a lot of people comment that they're just as good in the, with the dubbing with the rabbit dubbing brush as it is with the deer here. So if you, you know, the deer is naturally going to create a little more buoyancy, I guess, but the, definitely the rabbit won't. So when this gets wet, you can imagine it's all going to kind of mat together and it makes it much easier because um, maybe in a future one I can do one with the dubbing brush. Um, again, it's just tied in and it's wrapped maybe three turns with a dubbing brush and that's it tie off. So it's a much easier. You don't have to fool with the deer, of course. Um, so I'll show you that one. So that's another option. And uh, like I said, it, it kind of kind of looks like a mess here, um, but you can well imagine that between the rubber, the rabbit, and then all this marabou here, um, and then or not marabou, sorry, the uh, slapping, and then the marabou tail. You can see where this fly has a lot of movement in the water. Uh, gives a lot of movement, a lot of life in the water, and I think that's what makes it so effective. They come in a bunch of different colors. Um, typically olive, uh, rusty brown is probably another popular color. I've used them in chartreuse quite effective. Um, I've tied them in white. I haven't tied them in black, although I think black would, would work well as, as well. Um, and tan is another color. But typically, like I say, olive and, and probably rusty brown is probably the most, uh, is the most common ones. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please uh, subscribe to the channel. And um, I'll try to put a video out like this once a week if I can. And it'll primarily be, um, at least for the first number of videos at least, uh, um, 
flies that are typically used for uh, brook trout and landlocks. Uh, they might be in a bigger size, so like I said, these type of flies, you wouldn't see them used here locally for brook trout, but uh, I've had people use them for uh, for browns, not um, not sea trout, but you know, like for your German browns and some of the big browns that are around here. Uh, these these work quite uh, quite uh, quite well. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye.